All right, everyone, so I just saw this in the news that Dairy Queen was hacked. And so one of the ways that helps protect you against that sort of stuff is um, to invest in an SSL certificate. And I say invest because this is not free. Security is not free. So when we talk about setting up an account at Bluehost or uh, HostMonster or GoDaddy, they usually also provide you the service of getting SSL. So here, just a quick look, and we'll look at it in detail later. SSL certificates keep payments and customer data private. $69 a year, $79 a year, or $70 a year. In addition to, let's say, $10 to $15 for the domain name per year, and then around three to seven dollars per month for the hosting. So let's say around seventy dollars for the domain and hosting and another seventy for SSL. So about a hundred and forty to two hundred dollars a year to have your site online and secure. You think, well that's two hundred dollars. Well hopefully your business is making enough money back that you're able to pay for this because it could be much more catastrophic later when your customer data gets hacked if you don't have SSL or other security measures. Question. So we're not we're, so in here we're just talking about our actual actual customers, not necessarily their uh, their, their, their 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 credit card information won't be on the site. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about their uh, email and email. Exactly. Uh, because their credit card information will be over on PayPal. They're going to store it more safely than we ever could. But this is going to be the customer login information or the customer shipping address or the customer wish list. You know, whatever we set up, that's that stuff that does get saved to our site, not the credit card data. So you could not invest in this, and at least you still are, are protected in that your customer credit card data is on PayPal. But if someone does figure out, oh, they are using admin, and they are using the password, password, and they get in, and then they get access to, to their phone number. And this is a way that helps protect against that. So we'll get back to it again. But any other kind of general questions on this concept, SSL? All the companies sell it. They, they vary in price. You should shop around. Here's a price that I found here. Okay, back to our WordPress. We spent some time uh, getting a little bit more secure in talking about changing our username from admin to something else that you choose. So write that down because you've got a new admin. Um, now we're going to talk about setting up the child theme because again it's very... Um, actually let me check something here. Okay, so we'll set up the, the child theme now. Remember we talked about it last week, very very quickly last week, we talked about that it's the best thing to do in order for your site to be more, uh, more uh, update friendly. Because if you make changes to your theme and then you get the inevitable updates available and you, and you do those updates, it will erase your, your, your edits. Specifically the edits that you do by editing code. So if you never edit the code, you'll be okay with not making a child theme. But most of the time we'll want to edit our code because there's something that is not editable otherwise. Let's explore that for a moment. Hover over Appearance and go to Editor. When you go to Appearance Editor, this pulls back the the pretty curtain of what WordPress is and shows you all the naked code of what's behind the scenes. So go to Appearance Editor. And here it is. This shows this is our 2014 theme, editing our style sheet file. And here's all of the pieces we could edit the comments screen the design and the style of the comments screen, what's in the footer right now, it currently says proudly powered by WordPress. I want it to say, you know, copyright Victor Campos. If we edit that, we have to edit the code. And if we edit code and we update the site, it'll revert that back to the default. 
unless we have a child theme, which is what we're going to set up right now. And as we did it last time, it was rather confusing, so we'll do it again together. And the, the best way to um, proceed with this, I'm putting together a document that will do it step by step a little easier. But uh, we'll go we'll go to the WordPress codex to get the uh, to get the steps from WordPress, and then we'll do it together. So open up another web browser if you want, and uh, I'm going to go over to WordPress.org. Let's go to WordPress.org. Make sure you spell it right. It's not WordPress. WordPress.org. WordPress.org, and then we'll go to the Support Documentation menu item. Support documentation. And then you look under the section called Working with Themes, and you'll see Child Themes. So we're going to use that as our document to refer to, to what we need to do, just like we did last week. So working with Themes, Child Themes. And, sh and so, in short, what this tells us is we need a new folder that has at least one file, the style.css file. And that defines what's in this folder is a child of the parent theme. If we edit the child theme, it'll inherit the capabilities of the parent theme, but once we do an update, the parent theme is updated, and it doesn't change our child theme. And this we need to do it in the folder, the www folder. So I'm going to keep that window open over here. Okay, and uh, we're, we're creating a child theme, so if something does change in the parent, you can always go back and sort of duplicate the child theme and go back to the original. Is that what we're talking about? No, not quite. What we're doing here is we're creating a child theme, so if something does change in the parent theme, we tell it to update, and those updates automatically trickle down to the child theme, but they don't edit, they don't change our edits. It'll make more sense as we actually do it, but basically uh, it'll keep all of our changes intact, but we will get the capabilities of the new updates. So the, so the child theme would then be the one that's being shown as yes, the website? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. The child theme is the one that will become active. Okay. Alright, so uh, go ahead and open... Um, go ahead and open uh, a computer... Go back to your desktop and open computer window again. We're going to go to your local disk C. We're going to go to the WAMP folder, the www folder. Our current site is in the WP4 site folder, so open that up. And here, so these are, this is turning back the curtain even, or pulling back the curtain even further. This is what's behind the pretty interface. Even the, even the editor screen. So here's everything that our WordPress site is. And uh, usually we deal with what's inside the WP content folder. So open WP content. This is where it would show us any pictures that we've uploaded, any videos, etc. This is where all our themes are stored. This is where all our plugins are stored. So inside the WP content folder, open the themes folder. Yes. Okay, so in, in real life, not the local host, but when you do your sites, mm -hmm. you go back to your file manager on your Bluehost or whatever. Exactly. That's where you're doing the editing part. 
Yes, you would be doing this in your file manager of your hosting provider, Bluehost, GoDaddy, etc. And it varies with everyone, and of course I can help you during lab time if anyone needs that with your own provider. But this is the concept. We are opening a computer window and such and going to localhost. But once I'm on GoDaddy or Bluehost, I use my file manager there to do what I'm about to do. We've got one theme called 2014. We want to make a new folder, so in an empty spot here, right-click and select uh, New Folder. The name of this folder can be anything you want, but it's good practice to call it the name of the theme, the name of the parent theme, dash child. It's called 2014, and then dash child. One of the reasons to do that is for alf organization. Alphabetically, if we call this 2014 child, it will show up next to the original parent. If we called it something like child theme, well, if you've got more than one theme, then it's going to get out of order. So I'm going to keep it the name of the current theme, dash child, as per the instructions here. A child theme needs at least one file, style.css file. Last time we, we did it in a way that was a little confusing, so we'll do it this way, which might be less confusing. We're going to copy the existing style sheet file from the existing parent theme and paste it into the child and then modify it. That might be easier. So open the parent theme and don't get confused. It's not going to say parent in the folder. Don't put parent. It'll break things. But I'm going to refer to it as the parent theme because it's got the original name. Open that 2014 parent folder, not your child, the parent. And if you browse around here, somewhere you will see style.css. I want to copy this from my parent folder to my child folder. So <laughs> right click when you find style CSS file. Right click it. Nope. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you have style CSS file. You want to right click style.css file, copy. I copied it so that I'm going to go back to the top level here, and then go into 2014 child, open 2014 child, and then here right click, paste. So there's only one file, there's only one file in my 2014 child at the moment, the one that I copied from the 2014 parent. Question. So this style.css file, this is what we're going to edit. Did everyone copy it in? Do you see my screen with only one file in your child theme? Okay, we're going to edit this file. Right click. We have the option here. Edit with Notepad++. Edit with Notepad++. Right-click style.css, edit with Notepad++. You might get a pop-up that says an update is available, just cancel that. Okay, yes? That's oh, weird. Uh, what's that? Um, let me see. One of them you should cancel, which is the upgrade, and I don't know why you're getting this modified one if you just hope. Yeah, that's what I was Okay, uh, what you guys are getting is that uh, you have three tabs at the top, change log, hosts, and style CSS. 
uh, our technician, I guess, was using the software before us and editing a file, and now the file's not there, so it's affecting us. All you need to do is click no. And I, I can't exactly show you on my screen up there, unfortunately, but you see you, everyone's got three tabs at the top. One of them is red. So it's called switch to the tab that says style.css. There we go. So Notepad can be used to edit more than one file at once, and for some reason, your versions of the software, our technician was editing that host file before us and saved it into the image, so you're getting that. Should we close that up? You, you should close them too. Close those other tabs so that you've only got one to work with so that it's not so confusing. Simply click the little X next to the other tabs. Leave style CSS open. All right, so this style.css file is one of the most important files in a theme because it defines all the details of the theme, such as who the author is, where's the original theme installed so you can do updates to it, version number, description, all of that stuff. And we need this in order to say that this is a child of the parent theme. So, um, on my documentation here, it gives us the example in this code here that when we're working with our with our child file, this is what we should edit. Two things. The name of the theme and that it is a template, that there is a template for this file. So what we will edit on line number one, the theme is called 2014, but we'll change that to 2014 child. So when we go to activate this theme, there will be a theme that is called 2014 child. <coughs> At the end of line 2, press Enter, and we'll type template, capital T, colon, and we need to say what is the, what is the, the parent theme we're working with, the name of the folder of the parent theme, which is 2014, <coughs> lowercase. Those two lines there are technically the only two that we need to edit. The rest we can leave alone. What you could do is change some of these other lines to help yourself. Uh, for example, author. It says the WordPress team. The WordPress team. Well, technically, you're the author now because you're making your own theme. So, on, on line 5, the author here uh, will change this to say, um, let's write the, the name of your company, Victor's Bakery, and then instead of the WordPress team. Again, this is optional. The only two that are required are line 1 and 2. But this is useful because once you have a bunch of themes on your site, and you want to switch between them, this stuff right here will help you know which is which. Yeah. Not active at the same time, but just sort of waiting, waiting to be turned on. So you could have a theme that is for, for your, you know, your winter sale and one for your summer sale. Just activate it, and then your whole site changes to reflect the season. That was line five. I recommend also, and this is not required, line seven. I'm going to delete the description that is listed there, and instead write a custom theme based on 2014. You don't have to if you don't want to change this. I'm just showing you I'm just showing you that you can edit this stuff to 
suit your needs. Another optional field here or line is number 8, version. Well, this is our first version, so I'm going to put version 1.0. This is the first version of our custom theme. So child themes exist in two states in that they can be a, their own unique custom theme that doesn't look anything like the original theme. And at the same time, it's still based on the original theme. It's, its foundations, its structure. So you could keep the version numbers the same as the parent, but I like to change that to my own version numbers because I'm changing, I'm updating things to my specifications. So if I make some changes today, it's version 1.0. Next month I might make more changes to it, so I'll make it 2.0, or, or however you want to label this stuff. One more optional edit, line 12. This still has the old name, text domain 2014. Well, that should, I guess, suppose be 2014 child, no dash. I don't know if it matters, because it's not asking us for the name of the folder. The name, it's the name of the site, uh, of the, yeah, of the template. So confirm my, my changes here. The only two that, that were required were number two and three. Make sure you've spelled all of that properly. It's very easy to misspell the term 2014. But line number three is what's setting this as in as a um, as a child theme. Without this, it would think it's a parent, a normal, a normal theme, and then we'd get we'd get problems. And the other lines that we changed are, were optional, but I changed number five, the author, I put myself. Number seven, the description, I just put a simple description for myself. Number eight, I changed the version number for myself. And text domain, I changed that for myself. People, normal people will not really see those things. Only you will see these in the dashboard. And the rest, what follows in this, before anyone checks, we'll do a little we'll do a little carnival quiz here. How many of you okay, guess uh, does anyone want to guess how many lines in total of code do I have? Mine only goes to twenty-nine, but if I scroll down there it goes to something. So anyone wanna take a guess? How long is this? Don't check, just guess. Two hundred? Seven hundred? Seven thousand. Seven thousand. Seventy-seven thousand. So I'm going to go to the very bottom, and I've got four thousand three hundred and nineteen oh, lines. All of these lines of code here are CSS. These are what define the whole design of your site. HTML is the structure. For example, <coughs> this. Let's say I built it in HTML. I've got this box and that box and that box. And then via CSS, I change the style of it, the, the look of it, from white to pink. So CSS is what I use to change my colors, or my font sizes, or box borders, all of that stuff. The color of my links, etc. HTML is what I use to change, to actually create the structure. There's going to be a top part over here with some text. There's going to be a bottom part here. There's going to be a left part and a right part. So the HTML and then the CSS. That's what the CSS file is, style.css file. There's no mention here about where 
what boxes are 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 there or what uh, um, tags uh, HTML tags are being used the whole thing here is full of uh, are, are full of the the design of it all and so what we want to do on this eventually is come back and edit well I don't like the size of this font let's change it to 200 percent and here's where we change it question um, in the HTTP, when you have to put a child, HTTP, because we're breaking a new one. What are you looking at? Line number, number four, when you have to have the, the child folder at the end. Line four right here? I uh -huh. mean, yeah, 2014 dash child. No, because that is, uh, that is a link back to the original themes website. So that we uh, know that when the, we... In the website, the sample in the website, put the child. Notice how this says wordpress.org. That's not our website. That's up on wordpress.org. So whenever we, we, we want updates, it knows where to get the updates. There's no such thing as 2014 child on wordpress.org. There's, there's a 2014 child on our local host. So we're not going to change that because this is where the original WordPress parent files are at. All right, so as I was saying here, the, uh, the, the style CSS file includes everything that makes your site look a certain way. Look at this. If you scroll down to about line 149, there's a spot here that defines the look of your H1 tags. So whenever we select a heading 1, it's going to make it 26 pixels. If instead we wanted that to be 35 pixels, well, we change it here. Don't change it here yet. But that's the whole point of having this, this, this file. Now we're going to make our own edits that will supersede the original parent settings. And that's how you can take the theme that everyone has and make it your own. Customize it your own way by editing the CSS file. The problem with that, of course, is if we update, it'll erase everything back to factory settings, but not for us because we were creating a child theme. And that's the whole point of it. The parent theme will be updated, and the parent theme might say, okay, well, actually, we're going to go with size 25, but we had said size 35. Well, because our theme comes after the parent theme, our settings take precedence. So our settings will will stay intact and again it's very technical what we're doing complicated I've recorded everything here and so you're always able to go back and, and play the video again and, and do it on your own and during lab time I'm glad to help you out but this is a very important thing and I recommend it for everyone and I do it for my clients so okay, yes. just to bring final clarification for me because if I had followed this, that URI, I would have done it wrong. I would have done it that she asked about it. Mm -hmm. So we just have to make a mental note that URI is always the... Number four? Yeah. You also make a mental note that I never said to change it. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, because it's not it's I only not said to describe it. Exactly. I only okay. said to change, you know, line one and two. Okay. Those are the required ones. And I, and I recommended to change line five. Got it and 7, and 8, and 12. Okay. But I didn't mention any others, so okay. it would be fine to leave those alone. But what's happening there is that, yes, this is a link back to the original parent theme's original files. So we're not going to put 2014 child there because they're not, they don't exist on WordPress.org. That doesn't say localhost, and we will not put localhost. It doesn't, doesn't make sense to do that. Yes. So it's getting a lot twist. So say if you want a theme mm -hmm. from someone else, they'll say that particular parents theme for that other book. Exactly. Okay. Any other theme that you buy or download for free will have its own setup here, which may include all eleven of these lines or less or more. Okay. Things are optional. And that theme that you bought most likely will say awesomethemes.com slash themes slash you know style two okay. whatever it's called so exactly
right, so um, those are the big changes that we made. Uh, we have not saved yet because this little disk here is red. It's reminding us you haven't saved yet. So you want to go to File, Menu, Save. Question? Okay, um, last week, according to our documentation here, we also added this extra line of at import. What that basically does is copies and pastes the parent code into this file. But we've already done it because we just copied the whole file and there's the parent code. So we did do it a little different than last time, good point. We did not need to do it this time because we just copied the whole file. I think this way will be a little easier because last time we struggled a bit. What file am I in? What am I copying and pasting? Right here was just one big copy and paste, the style file, and then we edited it. So you don't have to add other stuff. Exactly. We don't need that at import because we've, we've manually imported it. All of the original parent CSS code is already there. That's what that basically does. It takes the, see, notice it's pointing back to the parent theme in its style file, and it's importing it into our current file. No need. We've already got it all here from the copy and paste. All right, did everyone save your file? No more red here? Mm -hmm. We can close Notepad now. That's all we really needed it for. So here in Notepad++, just exit out. We can, um, we can leave these other windows alone if you want, and we'll go back to our WordPress dashboard. Let's go back to our WordPress dashboard, and what we want to do there is go over to Appearance Themes. And now it should say our active theme is 2014, and we've got another theme we could work with, 2014 Child. If you hover your mouse over and select Theme Details over the missing thumbnail, Theme Details, hey, that's the stuff that we wrote. Version 1.0 of 2014 Child by Victor's Bakery, and the link takes me back to victorsbakery.com or whatever you wrote. A custom theme based on 2014 by WordPress. This is a child theme of 2014. <coughs> if that's missing, let me know. Tags and other stuff. Does everyone see something like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, no thumbnail because we never added a thumbnail. Um, you don't have to quite worry about it, but what's just to tell you what's going on. In the original parent theme, there's a file in there called screenshot.png. So in the parent theme, there's a, there's a screenshot.png file which has a little screenshot of the theme. Ours does not have that. Ours only has... Uh, ours only has uh, style.css, so that's why we don't have any thumbnail here. So I'm not going to get into adding your own thumbnail, um, not that important. But what I do want to do at this point is select activate the 2014 child theme. Can yes? Can show the child theme? Go ahead and activate the child and you'll see that it's basically the same as before, but now we have the capability to edit. Matter, but what, what should matter is the 
So we're going to have Robert select it.
right, so we should, it should say that the 2014 child theme is active. Uh, so this was reiterating what we did last time. Hopefully the more we do it, the more it uh, makes sense. Now, once at the end of the day, once we... Um, at the end of the day, once we do our duplicator plugin, then um, this will this will be saved also on that. We won't have to do it again um, because the duplicator plugin saves everything, even child themes. Yes. You can save it to your flash drive. Uh, not necessary because now it's part of your site. You can that always. For next time, you can come right in next time and go to the flash drive and just copy it right to your style folder. Uh, again, when we do our duplicator plugin at the end of the day and we resurrect our site, it'll all be done. So everything's going to be saved in the duplicator plugin at the end of the day. So I don't see much of a point of just saving that style file because it'll all be done for us once we resurrect our site next time. It all gets saved to the duplicator plugin. Um, so the point of this is that now we can edit portions of our project that um, would, would get erased. So if, uh, if, for example, on my site itself, at the bottom it says proudly powered by WordPress. I want to change that. And there's no screen that I see in my dashboard that lets me change that. No problem. I can always go to my code and change my code. That's the whole point of the child theme. Now remember that I said that basically we have, um, you can think of it this way, HTML for the for the structure and foundation of the site all of the structure all of the all of the sections all of the sections of the site so like i had in my example here this this sheet that everyone signs there's a section there's a top section a central section a bottom section a left section a right section it's got sections. That's what I used HTML to, to create. Then we've got the CSS, which is the, the style, the look and feel, the design, the, the colors, fonts, sizes, all of that style. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Basically, the style, the look of it, the, the colors, etc. And HTML, that's Hypertext Markup Language, that's the structure. So I take this plain structure and I style it with CSS. Now it's pink. That's, that's what we've got. So we've got a style.css file. So all of the... All of the um, all of the things that we want to edit of style will be found in the style.css file. The trickier part is that if we want to change what is structurally there, if we want to change the contents or or the structure, like let's say instead of having one long wide top area, I want to divide it into two top areas. That's structural. So I need to edit structural pieces. That's HTML. So then that's going to be editing HTML files and most likely pieces of the design, such as footer.php or header.php or sidebar.php, the actual pieces that make up the site. And because we're dealing with child themes, we can do that. And, and updating the parent theme will not affect the child elements. However, uh, in the child folder, we only have a copy of style CSS at the moment. That's the only thing we can edit. So doesn't it make sense that we should copy footer PHP into the child theme and then edit it? And when we edit it, it won't affect the parent. 
and that's what we need to do. So that's our tactic. I want to change where it says proudly powered by WordPress, and that's a structural thing. It's at the footer. It's at the foot. So I need to copy, we need to copy uh, the footer.php file from the parent folder into the child folder. We'll do that right now, but does this make sense? All right, so we need to do some copy and paste uh, within the folders, again, the file manager. So I'm going to minimize this, and hopefully you still have your folders open here. All right, I still have my window here where I've got 2014 parent and 2014 child. Right now we're going to be editing the, the footer area. I know this because I've done this before, and this is an example of something we can do that's easy to do. Uh, but what you want to do is go back to the folders here and open the 2014 parent folder. And in a list of files here, one of the ones that you're going to find is called footer.php. Like a moment ago, we're going to right-click and copy. We're going to copy the footer.php file, and then we're going to switch over to the child folder and paste. So here's my footer PHP file, right-click it, copy. <coughs> Go back to 2014 child, right-click, paste. All right, so we've got, we should all have now a copy of footer PHP and style CSS. Everyone see that? So the concept is, if I want to edit anything structurally, I need a copy of that file in my style, in my child folder. And it's just a matter of copying from the parent, pasting to the child, and then we'll edit it in a moment. Again, this is pretty advanced stuff because um, we're, we're editing foundational things. We are uh, we're going above and beyond, and this, what's, this is what separates your theme from everyone else's. You might browse and browse and browse and find the perfect theme, but someone else probably found the perfect theme also. And now you'll, there'll be two themes out in the world, two sites out in the world that look the same. And perhaps the theme author provides a mechanism to click the Customize button, and it'll let you change some things, but then not most things. Here, this is pretty advanced, we're going to be editing the deepest levels of the theme, and since we're doing it as a child, if we mess this up, well, we're only editing the child theme, not the parent theme. We can always switch back to the parent theme and we'll be fine. We can simply delete this whole folder and do it again and we're fine. We're not editing the original parent files. So I'm going to leave that window open and I'll switch back to WordPress. And uh, I want to go, if you're not in the dashboard, you want to go to the dashboard. And remember, under Appearance, Editor. Can I do Notepad? You can, but I, um, I recommend here because you, you will see directly your, your changes. So let's go to Appearance, Editor. And before you do anything, you should see right away over here, this child theme inherits the template from a parent theme. If you don't see that, you're not editing the child theme. And right now it shows that I've got two files to work with, footer.php and the style sheet only those two. We only copied those two. Under the Appearance menu, Editor. Okay. 
Up here you can easily edit, uh, you can e easily switch between themes, but notice this also says I'm editing 2014 child. So everyone sees that, just their footer and their style. So what we then do this for the CSI and style, CSS, what we will then edit it here? We weren't able to edit it until we added template 2014. Oh, okay. It didn't know that it was a child theme, and we so we would not be able to see it. All right, so here now, uh, click on your Flutter PHP file, and this brings up the code. It's not 4,000 lines of code like the style sheet file is. It's less lines of code, but uh, this is what defines what happens at the end of the document, at the footer. And we've got a header section, a main content, a sidebar, a footer. WordPress is made up of separate files that are all put together when someone visits the site. So the cool thing is that instead of having one long file to edit, well, you just edit the footer PHP file and that affects what's in the footer. That's what we're doing here. So this this is code. This is a combination of, uh, of HTML and PHP code. And what powers WordPress is HTML, CSS. Let me write it down here. This is what, uh, what powers WordPress. So if you want to become a real WordPress pro, these are the things you need to learn. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP. Easy. Just four languages. Um, you can learn PHP all on its own, uh, but usually you learn HTML and CSS concurrently, and then after that you learn JavaScript. But that's kind of the order that I would go if you want to learn them all. And we do offer classes in a variety in all of these languages at this college. So you want to look in the catalog and see what, what's being offered. But if you know all of those four languages, you'll have the most control or the most power to fully edit your WordPress theme. So and I'll write it like this. HTML is for the structure of things. CSS is for the style. JavaScript. We haven't really talked about that one, but that's for the interactivity. Like if you want to have uh, uh, complex slideshows or capturing user input, like a like a, a, a feedback form or a contact form. Although you, I find I need to get into that less than the other languages because there's so many great plugins that'll do that for you. That's what uh, plugins often are. They're little JavaScript uh, programs that do the stuff of letting people subscribe or doing user polls and all of that. So when I work in the real world, I don't do much JavaScript in a, P in a WordPress site. It's usually a plugin that handles it. And then the PHP stuff, how do you describe that? That's, like, that's related to HTML. It's kind of related to both HTML and JavaScript at the same time sort of related to both HTML in that it's structural and JavaScript in that it's for interaction. And so the ones that I'm often working with for real clients is, is CSS. That's the one that like 90% of the time I'm working in CSS because I've got the perfect theme and the client wants that text larger, wants that text moved over, wants that box to have a drop shadow, you know, style. Very few times Compared to that, I'm editing the actual HTML because I got that template because it has the structure that I want. It's like buying a classic car. I want that chassis, but I'm going to style it with my own flames on the side. And then PHP, like I said, it's kind of both at the same time, and I do deal with it, but definitely CSS much more. What is PHP stand uh, It doesn't officially have a, an acronym, uh, but one version of the acronym is... Uh, PHP. Um, pretty hard program. <laughs> pretty hard program. That would work. Pretty hard, pretty hard programming. But um, 
something. Per, oh, uh, another one that I remember is personal homepage, although that's, <laughs> that's very archaic now. Um, what I've also heard PHP stand for is PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. So then you've got a reverse of acronym, an acronym inside of an acronym. And computer scientists love that. So uh, you don't really need to know what it exactly stands for, but PHP Hypertext Processor is what I, preprocessor is what I often hear. No, these are more like web page languages. Yes, oftentimes we see SQL in in tandem with PHP, because what SQL is or SQL, what it is, is where the database is stored or the actual database files, database. Um, data or database text. So the SQL database, it holds the database content and oftentimes we use PHP as a middleman between the HTML and the database. HTML cannot access the database directly so we use PHP in the middle to translate what we do in HTML so that the SQL database knows what we're talking about. In a sense yeah, and in a, in a sense, that's what we were doing. Yes? And uh, PHP, what's that FileZilla? Is that, because I know we're using MySpace mm -hmm. admin, but FileZilla, I remember it's, it's that one a lot. That before. one is for, uh, FileZilla is more for when you're dealing with FTP. Okay. And FTP is just basically logging into the folder and making changes to the folder renaming the folder, editing a file, uploading a file, that you're doing that in FTP. You're doing that in the file manager. It's a file transfer protocol, so we're, we're working with files. We don't really need to do any of that at the moment, but FTP is what we're doing when we're uploading or downloading files from the folder. So you see there's a lot of technologies in play here that make WordPress work. Um, Suppose I can put it here also, FTP is for File Transfer Protocol, which is to upload or download files. And there's probably a few other things here and there that are related to WordPress, but all of this is related to this is what is known as a CMS. WordPress is a CMS, uh, Content Management System, which is that there's a database that is holding every bit of knowledge about your site. What is the post name? What is the post content? What is the post identifier? Who wrote the post? Who is that author? What is their email? What is their biography? How many pages do you have in total? What plugins do you have installed? How many pictures in total do you have? What's the name of that picture? The database is holding all of that information. Behind the scenes, WordPress is interfacing with the database via PHP. HTML is the structure of it all. CSS is the style. And all of this is a content management system because we don't have to create, we don't have to log in and create a folder for this picture or create a folder for that blog post or rename our files and link our files. WordPress is managing it all. It's managing the content. The system manages our content. And that's why we can go in very easily and switch from one theme to another because somewhere in the database it says theme equals number one. And when we press the pretty button that says activate new theme, it'll change theme equals number two. And all the content is still there, the about page, the contact page, the blog posts, the author biography. It's just that what gets changed is that one bit in the database that says that this is a new theme. And so WordPress is one of the most well-known CMS, CMSs out there. There's a bunch of other ones.
but um, what we want to edit here, back in our editor, we don't want it to say proudly powered by WordPress anymore. We want it to say our own copyright info. So here's a here's some text uh, HTML. There's a spot here. If you browse, you're gonna see something that says hashtag main. It says slash div exclamation point hashtag main. And then a little lower, you're gonna see something that says footer ID colophon. A little lower it says PHP get sidebar footer. And then div class site info. Find the place where you see div class site info. Right there. It's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines up from the bottom from the HTML slash HTML. This is the area where we need to change this at to notice what it says. This is HTML. Has anyone ever worked with HTML before? All right, so if you have, this should look a little familiar. If you haven't, what this is saying is uh, notice there's some text that says proudly powered by. And then WordPress. There. And it is also a link. This is href here, that's a link it points back to wordpress.org. So that text is going to be displayed in the footer, in the site info part of the footer of the site. Proudly powered by WordPress and an active link, so when you click it, it goes to wordpress.org. So for us, that's a little bit of overkill. We're going to change it. There should be a line that starts here that says ahref, and it goes on and on and on, and then it gets bumped to the next line which starts with php printf, blah, 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 slash a. Between a here and slash a here is that line, basically, that says proudly powered by WordPress. So what we're going to do is remove that line completely. I'm going to select it, and then, I'll and then you can see it. I'm going to select from, you know, less than a all the way down to a greater than. I'm going to select that line. And you just click and drag to select like this. So pay attention to what I selected. Don't go too far. Don't select this over here. Don't select this up here. Only from here to here. Once you are confident you've selected what I've selected, press delete on the keyboard. Now, yes, we are. Can I just modify the if you know how, sure. So what we're doing here is um, sort of like popping the hood of our car and booting around it in there. How many of you are confident in doing that? Not too many. So this is sort of the same thing. We've popped the hood and we're going to edit, we're going to pull some spark plugs and such. So um, yeah, this could break your whole site because you know you don't see much of a difference perhaps, but if I were to select this much, Oops, I got a little bit too much code, and if I delete that, the whole site would probably break, or at least in the footer section, because I'm editing the footer. <laughs> so it could be that if you select too much or too little, something could, bad could happen. But the whole point of having a child theme is that we have this safety net. If we do see something broke, well, we can just activate our parent theme again and try again. We would delete the child theme, put the child theme back in, activate it, and try again. Um, much better than if we were doing this on the parent theme and then we don't know what we did and we don't have no way to go back. We have to start completely with reinstall WordPress. It can be that bad. Yes? If you went too far and you did delete it, can you like control Z? As long in this, or would you have to do that in the regular file that's in your folder? As long as you don't exit this screen, or update the file, you do have an undo at that point. So if you do, do, if you delete too much, which I just did, and click save or update, there's no more undo. So as long as you, you realize it and right away undo it, you can still bring it back. So would it be better to make the changes in the actual, the, the PHP file that we had in our project folder? So we could Possibly. undo and like 
Like we could try it out, see what it looks like, and if we messed it up, we could undo it here. Or? That could be a way if you if you're yeah. if you're actually in the folder, and this is a little more advanced. But if you're in the folder and you're actually editing it in the folder here, what we're editing in here, Notepad, is the same as what we're editing in the WordPress editor, and this does give you more undos. So it might be a little safer, but again, it's getting a little off topic because there's just so m many ways to do the same thing here. Well, the only thing we're going to do is make one quick change, and I really recommend if you're not comfortable with HTML, even if you have Notepad++, I don't recommend you do this stuff. Right here I'm showing you because I know what I'm doing and I know what to tell you where to change. But when you get into really deep level stuff, you want to do a lot of precautions. So even myself, my workflow is that even though I've got a child theme, what I do is I take this code and I copy it somewhere else, temporary as a safe safety measure, you know, copy it anywhere else into a blank file. So I have a copy of it. And then make my changes here. Oops, I made a mistake. Well, no problem. I have a copy of it waiting for me on my other file. And again, there's lots of ways to accomplish this. Some themes are really advanced in that there's a spot somewhere here that says, you know, edit my child files. And that has a built-in undo and redo and, and version histories and all of that. But this, what we're doing, is like one of the most low-level raw things that we can do. And I assume in future versions of WordPress, this will have also like a, a version history and an undo. Because newer versions of WordPress do have version history for other things. We can edit our blog posts 40 times and see a list of all 40 changes and undo back to change 35. But that's for posts and pages. It doesn't have it for this yet because this is more complex. But I think one day WordPress 5.0 or something will have a way to edit your code and have it saved in versions and you can go back to what you did last week. But right now we're kind of uh, you know, trapeze artists and this is a version of the safety net child themes but there's still a lot that could go wrong. So just to confirm this line of code here A to A, delete that and we'll write copyright little copyright symbol is the ampersand, which is shift 7, copy, semicolon. There's no spaces here. Ampersand symbol, copy, semicolon, one unit, no spaces there. Space before, space after, of course, so copyright, that'll turn into the copyright symbol once we update it. The year, 2014, the entity, so Victor's Bakery, or your name, whatever you want. And that's all we need for a copyright notice. You can add all rights reserved and all of that other stuff if you want. But we replaced the one that had proudly powered by WordPress. And we still are, but we want it to be uh, with our name. So we took all of that out and just put simply our name. And just to confirm, you didn't delete anything extra here. You didn't delete anything extra here just the part in the middle. So you don't leave it in for anywhere? No, I removed the whole thing because that's, like I said, that's overkill. That's too much for us that we're beginners. It's still going to print it because it's HTML. What was being done a moment ago is a little bit more complex using PHP. We don't need to be that complex. It'll work. I've done this before. <laughs> so let's um, write that and then update file. And then to see your result, visit site. So on the home page, now you should see what you wrote. And if you go to any other page, you should also see that. Because the cool thing about WordPress is it, it runs on templates. The footer PHP template file gets used everywhere throughout the site. So you just change it once, and it edits everywhere. And of course, what I showed you was one of the most basic, simplest edits. We can get very complex. We can add a background color there. We can add a drop shadow. We can set that to a variety of things. I don't want to get that complicated at the moment, 
but I'm just showing you this is the this is my workflow with a client we start remember I mentioned previously we have three levels of, of WordPress three levels of word I'm sure there's a better name WordPress themes the first level is simply to <coughs> use a theme as is, minimal customization. <coughs> Some themes have a button that say customize. That's still level one, because it's still going to protect you. The next level up, um, start with a theme, customize <coughs> the heck out of it. The way we're doing it, editing the code with the with the appearance editor. In the third level, create a theme from scratch. That one requires with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. So what we're doing is number two. We're taking a theme and we're customizing it uh, by editing the code, by editing the child theme. And it's a very powerful thing, and it's complicated. Anything besides level one is complicated. But level three is the most complicated because you're building it from scratch. It's like you're building the house itself. You're, take, you're putting every brick on the wall, brick by brick. You're doing it all. Level two is, well, maybe you start off with a fixer-upper, a fixer-upper house, and then you start to construct the new stuff on top of it. And one is you just walk in, turn key, and put your own furniture into it. Yes? Um, that's a good question. If you're creating your own style from, if you're creating your own theme from scratch, then you yourself uh, are doing your own updates. But yeah, I would still make a child theme of your own theme. Because if you do your own updates, then it still could erase your own, your own, um, your own edits. So it's always a good idea to use a child thing. You can have a theme like 2014, and then the chart can be like the edited of some of my family picture. Sure. And then that would be starting from scratch. No, nope, that would be number two. Starting from scratch is that you that you open a blank file and start writing code. That's number three. From the beginning, you make your own HTML code, your own CSS, your own JavaScript, everything from code, from scratch. So now what we're doing right now is number two? Number two, yeah. Yes? Uh, you can stop the asking, which, uh, can you see the plugins? You can. Yeah, the wordpress.org. I'm going to write here. The WordPress.org documentation. The WordPress.org documentation will tell you everything that you need to know so that, yeah, you build your own site and then set it up so that you can put in plugins. So you can take any slideshow plugin that exists and add it to your own custom theme. It's pretty complicated, but all the documentation is there. Um, we can avoid number three just by looking at things, even which is just when the layout to be able to do the hardware. Yeah. Remove everything and just you know use the layout. Exactly. Remove things. everything and use the layout. You don't really need to get to number three. Uh, uh, myself learning WordPress and HTML, and many people what they do is at one point they feel like, well, I'm pretty talented with HTML and such. I want to make my own thing from scratch. Mm -hmm. People think that, and then they do it a couple of times, and then don't do it again, because it's just so complicated. 
you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Even the most pro uh, web studios still start with at least a basic theme, like like Twitter's Twitter's Bootstrap or other basic themes, and then on top of it, build on top of it because you don't need to build a wheel every time. So, yes. Victor, so your your personal plan is to, mm -hmm. did you start off with number three then? I've done all three of these levels. I've done all three of these levels, but nowadays with any site we're usually on level two. It doesn't really behoove the client because it's going to be more expensive for them to start a project from scratch. What we do is with the client we sit down and browse various theme repositories and we and we, we look at them and maybe guide the client a little bit. This one would be good for your site because it's got three columns. And then, of course, we're going to customize it with their own colors and gradients and pictures and footer content and everything. But we want that chassis so that we can build on top of it. All within WordPress? Yes. You normally set off with WordPress? That's right. So we don't really need to do number three because that's going to take longer and it'll translate to a more expensive project. We usually do number two. And then for the easy sites, you know, for the easy $1,200, $1,500 sites, we do number one. Of course, with minimal customization, we do go in and put the person's logo and add the pages and all of that. But whenever we need to write custom code, CSS, HTML, or PHP, that's always level two, and that's more expensive. Yes? I know this is kind of a hard thing. So when you're using number two, and you, see, and you guide the client to determine the theme, mm -hmm. and then that Many times these themes have a very liberal copyright. Okay. You have to read the theme um, contract, or what, what's it called, not contract, uh, license. Okay. You have to read their license and say, some of them say, any customization is fine as long as you leave a footer at the bottom that said the original authors. And some are fine with as long as you leave it, the, as long as you leave it in the code but not visually visible in the site. And some of them say you cannot customize the site for a commercial site okay. if you're selling a product. So always read the license of the theme. Yeah, because some guy, some client will buy a theme and they come to you and say, hey, I, I put this theme and mm -hmm. customize it and then you know, we give them copyright issues because we bought a theme for our bucks or something. But we always check the license ourselves also and tell them what we can or can't do and say based on your license, what you paid for, you will be able to customize it so forth, but not the way that they need it, perhaps. And that's what the thing about WordPress themes that if you're getting like a $30 or $60 theme, it's probably a nice theme, but maybe it's set up that you cannot customize it. That if you do, technically you're breaking the copyright notice and it's not that they're going to be, you know, hunting you out. To, to find you that you broke the copyright, but if you did, do, do, if you do get found out, it could be, you know, expensive. Yeah. So there's some themes out there that cost a thousand dollars, and those are the themes that give you the full control without the, you know, they they, they give you the the right to edit it however however way you want. So you need to say related to Josh Mo's Exactly. So check check the documentation where you bought it at. Right, so um, we've uh, customized the footer. Not so hard. Uh, we need to do. We needed to do a lot of setup. The child theme. We needed to copy the relevant files from the parent to the child. So that means if we want to edit something <coughs> up on the header, we probably need to copy the header file. That's the kind of concept. But at least now we've got the style file, which allows us to change the background colors and the font sizes and all of that. The structural stuff was we usually need to copy the actual PHP file. And PHP, as we were editing it here, is actually a mixture of HTML and PHP. That's why it's kind of hard to explain, because these right here are PHP tags. That's PHP. Uh, I'm sorry, these are HTML tags. That's HTML, that's HTML. Anything marked with PHP, guess what? It's PHP. So there's PHP inside of this HTML file that does some sort of PHP command. It gets to the sidebar and then displays it there. So again, we spent uh, a day on a lot of fo foundational things, and we're seeing that as we get more complex with WordPress, we need to deal with this stuff. So I'm going to end the lecture in a moment.
we're going to do the duplicator plugin, of course, so that we don't have to redo this next time. Next time when we come back, we'll already have the child theme ready. This edit we made in the footer will stay there. We've created that new login account, so make sure you wrote that down, and, and all of that. And then when we come back, we'll resurrect the site next time, and we'll move forward. We've still got plenty of things to do. We haven't gotten to the e-commerce plugin, but I expect to get to it next time. And finally, we're going to start adding e-commerce capabilities, products, shopping carts, and all of the cool stuff with that. And then payment gateways to collect payments, and then so forth. General questions. Yeah. We changed the footer here. You, you knew that you couldn't change the footer right here because you went to the customize and the here and it doesn't show a place to change the footer. Exactly. As well. Yeah, so depending on your theme, you'll have a customize button, and depending on the theme, you might see something that says footer, so change the footer. Yeah. What I wanted to edit was not found here. This is level one. Yeah. 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 This whole thing about child themes, etc., and now I can edit exactly what I want, but more complex. So if I want to change the sidebar, I need to go to the sidebar PHP file. Most likely. Most sidebar. likely. I don't see anything to edit a sidebar, so most likely we need to edit our sidebar file. But if you want to edit the color of it, most likely it'll be the CSS file, not I the structure. I can change here too, but it doesn't say to again. Yeah, it doesn't say the color of the sidebar. That's right. Just for the background. Okay, so the side. Question. When you do a child theme about what do you charge a client for the child theme? Uh, well, I don't want to say on camera here. This is being recorded. <laughs> but uh, ask me during the break and such. Because it always, it really varies. I, I can't really give a flat fee for any project. <clears throat> Even if people tell me, well, it's just going to have this and this. Easy. No, I do have to talk to a client always and see what they really need. And it's like a free 30-minute consultation to see what where they're currently at, what where they want to go, what their goals are, the budget, of course. And then within the working within the budget, here's what we can do. So it's not a good idea for any designer to really say, yeah, I can do your website for $200, $2,000. Even that might be too much or too little for what needs to be done. All right, so the last thing that we'll do here is we'll, uh, we'll, you can do, actually you can do this if you want, but we'll do the duplicator one more time, and then when we come back we'll have our site to resurrect. So we've already got the duplicator plugin installed, that's been there all along because we installed it previously. Let's go back to your dashboard if you're not there. Hover over Duplicator and go to Packages. And then under Packages, we're going to Create New. We've done this before, so Packages Create New. And this should say today, we're, we're going to save today's archive, 2014-1010, Victor's Bakery. Any notes here? Good idea to make notes. What did we do? We uh, created a new uh, admin user account. Uh, created a child theme. And edited the footer.php. Whatever notes you want to write here. I don't know if there's a limit, but it seems that this is a pretty big space. You can write as much as you want here. And I do this for clients. You know, I just logged into that one of the restaurants and it's got nine updates waiting. So I'm gonna make a duplicator backup at this point and make a note before updates. I'm gonna make the update, test the site, everything works fine. <coughs> Done. If not, oops, i got to resurrect the site because one of these plugins did something. <coughs> or better yet, you know, make an archive, take it down to my <coughs> test server, do the updates on the test server, test it there, everything's fine, bring the duplicator back to the live site, and then we're done. More work, but more safe. So just 
any notes you want to write there. Select next. <coughs> My results here say good. I'll build it. Notice that says keep this window open during the build process. This may take several minutes, and it could. I've dealt with a site that was up on the server, and it was like a 200 megabyte site because she had a lot of high quality pictures and I kept that open for like 15 minutes and then eventually it got to this point. <coughs> if you don't get any feedback in 30 seconds, keep waiting. If you don't get any feedback in two minutes, keep waiting. It should eventually finish. Once we get to this screen, um, you want to click to download the installer PHP file. It's asking me to open or save. I'm going to save. <coughs> and then select your archive file and again save that and these should end up on your desktop so you can take both of these files with you um, I'm gonna put mine in the folder in the network drive so these these got saved to my desktop but I'm gonna create a folder to hold them both. Click the button. Click the button to download it. Click the installer. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> What's the question? It goes in downloads. I can push it. Start the app. I'll help you in just a moment. But uh, you want to click it, and it'll tell you to save it or open it. So click save. Save. Mm -hmm. What I would recommend is make a new folder, and I'm going to call the folder WordPress 2014-10-10. And then the two files that we just downloaded, we're going to put them into that WordPress folder. And that's the folder you want to take with you. That's the folder that I'm going to put in the network folder. So again, this is this is uh, just a little bit of organization. This is just taking the files that we just downloaded, putting them into one folder to keep them safely both together because you're going to need both the installer and the zip file to resurrect your site. So I'm putting both of those files into a new folder, and now that's the folder that I'm going to take with me if I want to continue to work on it at home or bring your site back next time. I have a previous PHP file there, so which one I want to say that this one? The one that says one. This is great. Well, I tried to drag it, but I couldn't, so I think I'm going to have to go back and do downloads. Question? One moment. So I'm going to end the lecture soon, then I'll help people, but any general questions?